All right, Don Catcher here with another random monologue. Um, uh, one that touches on two very sensitive subjects again. Um, then, sorry ahead of time for any unintended offenses. Um, the difference between sensuality and the affection between those that are in a God-ordained covenant in the Bible. Um, that's, that's the topic, the difference between um, things of a, a physically affectionate nature outside of what would be considered um, platonic or um, kin affection, you know, brotherly, holy affection. Um, you know, the difference between that and the, the intimacy between, you know, a husband and wife, um, whether, you know, it's two people that are single gendered or two people that are eunuchs or two people that are, um, nursing father and nursing mother or both nursing fathers and when I say nursing mother I mean not just a single gendered woman that's nursing a baby I mean you know a predominantly female um, hermaphrodite which would be a predominantly female intersexed individual um, versus, you know, what's outside of a covenant relationship between them and God. Um, yeah. Most people know about the Song of Solomon. And I disagree with how the History Channel views it. it. It's not a sexy book. It's not biblical pornography. Um, it is a husband who loves his wife who is treating her in a loving and respectful manner that is beautiful and poetic and the wife doing it back. Um, that is affection. That is, you know, that is completely different than sensuality. Sensuality is lustful, manipulative, um, can be very abusive, whether people realize it or not. Um, and tends to confuse people. Um, I know in this day and age, um, sensuality is considered to be something healthy. Um, being able to express your body in sexual manners is considered healthy by a lot of people. Within a committed, God-ordained 
relationship. Yes, it can be if people aren't having unclean desires about each other. If it all comes out of love, then yes, it is a very beautiful and healthy thing. But if it comes out of unclean desires and um, is about one's own self getting what they want out of a person, then whether it's in or out of a committed relationship, that's not healthy. When you're using people to get what you want for your own self-gratification, that's not healthy. That's using and abusing others. And most people don't think about that. And in the Bible, there are two um, two things that are both um, translated at times into lust. One is um, desire that is clean, which is compassionate or passionate. And then one is unclean and is sensuality. You know, it, it's the filth of the flesh. Um, you know, where it talks about the, you know, the flesh, lust against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh. That, that's part of what I'm talking about. Um, you know, it's a battle. And I know none of us here are perfect. Um, you know, God is perfecting those of us that are letting him. But, you know, we still have to deal with this mortal flesh that has its own inclinations. You know, we're supposed to crucify it daily and put it under subjection to the will of God and our desire to serve him and you know coming out of all sorts of bad relationships um and also having um having witnessed some healthy ones um even though I, I haven't been allowed to experience very many of my own except for my relationship with God. Um, and that's a different sort of relationship now, isn't it? But when people use their sensuality and lust after each other and want to use the other person to get what they want that's abuse whether they realize it or not whether that means neglecting the other person sexually or emotionally or mentally that's abuse um, opposed to, you know, what we see as far as God's picture of how everyone is supposed to treat everyone, whether you're mother and father, brother and sister, cousins, aunts, uncles, perfect strangers, um, you know, we're supposed to love each other as God loves us, including those that are our enemies. Um, and husbands are supposed to, and I would say all mates, you know, whether it's husband or wife, you're, no, you're supposed to love the person you are committed to. You are vowed to before God 
for the rest of your life. You're supposed to love that person as God loves the church. That is a completely beautiful, sacrificial love. Um, it's unconditional and unreserving. And it's not to get what you want out of the other person. Which is what sensuality is usually about. Um, and the, the sexual actions that come out of sensuality um, are very different than the affections that come out of a heart of love. Um, the sexual actions, whether it's just kissing and petting, or whether it's everything else included, when that doesn't come out of a heart of love, it, it causes pain and strife. When you're just using another person's body to get what you want out of them, that's not healthy. Um, even if you're doing it to yourself, even if you're, you're doing it to yourself to please your mate, if it is more to please yourself, then that's not healthy. Um, no matter what psychiatrists tell you, um, that is not spiritually, mentally, and emotionally healthy and can cause sexual addictions. Whereas, um, it can tear down relationships and destroy relationships. Um, and God is all about relationships. That, that's part of the reason why he created everybody was so that he would have fellows and brothers and sisters and children to love that would love each other and love him back if they wanted to um you know that with the elect angels that with you know the jewish elect that with the gentile elect you know all and everything and everyone in between, you know, that, you know, allow him to redeem them. You know, that's what he wants. But using his, and abusing each other by taking the, the God-given beauty of the affections of matehood that come when you're you're showing someone your love through affection and perverting that and using it to manipulate other people or whether you're being manipulated by another person and they're using your love for them to hurt you you know that's wrong that's not healthy um, but, you know, the affections between mates can be a very beautiful thing. Um, what's described in the, the Song of Solomon is something gentle and beautiful and graceful. Um, something tender and compassionate. Um, it's completely different than what I see in society what I have seen in the majority of relationships and the people around me um, what I've had to bear witness in the, the sexual abuse I both endured 
and witnessed growing up. Um, yeah. So, um, yeah, I had a lot more that I wanted to say on this subject. Um, and I know I need to monologue about it more. Um, you know, part of, part of my doing these things is supposed to be therapeutic. It's help, supposed to help me not only be able to talk to people better, um, but also to um, deal with my own issues and face them as, you know, I seek to help others with theirs while they're, <laughs> they're maybe helping me with mine at the same time. You know, it's supposed to be it's supposed to be helping everybody. It's supposed to be a win-win. But, um, this subject's a rather hard one for me. It's, it's pretty fresh. Um, because I'm, you know, I'm only 34. And I'm coming out of 33 years worth of abuse um and I won't withhold from you that uh, a lot of that abuse was of a sexual nature um most of the abuse I've endured um was either mental emotional or sexual or a mixture of those um and at times spiritual um abuse as well and neglect um, a lot less physical abuse but I had to I had to watch um, a lot more than I had to physically endure um, and so yeah I'll I'll leave um, this here for now um, and I'm going to be keeping all of you guys in prayer and I love you guys even if I don't know you um, and the Lord be with you and keep you and bless you and hopefully at a later date uh, whether months later or years later whenever the Lord wills um, I'll try to pick this topic back up um, you guys be blessed and don't catch out. <laughs>